Hi everyone. Um, I'm just in a few minutes early. I just thought I'd get in and just wait for a few people to come in. I've had have had quite a few people saying that they are unable to make it in tonight. But then you can watch the repeat. Um, yeah, tomorrow when this is finished. So I'm just going to wait until we can get a few more people in here. Ah, oh, hello. <laughs> hello, you. Hello, Miss Kimbra. Hello. Um, yes, so I've had quite a few people that can't make tonight. I'm going to work out to put a, a vote. There's some sort of, there's a voting app that you can use. And hi, Debs. Oh, look. Hi, Deb. Hi, Kimbra. You guys will see each other in a few weeks. Not long now. That's, of course, if you're coming, Kimbra. Um, yes, yeah, so this will be um, uh, posted. And hey, Elle, welcome. Lovely to see you. Um, so we can... Uh, yeah, some people have got... Not well, or oh, that's what I was saying. That's right. Um, I'm going to take a, a vote to see who would like to move it forward to Tuesday nights. So I'll stay with Wednesday nights because what I'm doing is I'm recording Wednesday nights and putting them up on a YouTube um, post as an introduction. And then um, as we go into any further lessons after week six, um, uh, then uh, we can, yeah, change, we can, yeah, choose what night that we want to continue to work through, work with. Who? Hi, Rob Carter. Who's Rob Carter, Peter Shade? That's a bit weird. Is that your, is that your soul name? Did you get your soul name last week? What was it, Pete? El, um, you've got your soul name. Did you do the exercise last week, Elle, and um, do the visual uh, that was about finding your, your soul name, yourself, rather than it being given to you? So it's been given to you directly from spirit, your own... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Pete. You meant to write, write, write Robin Collins, I believe. Anyway, so yeah, <clears throat> what's your what was your soul name, Peter? It was Cos. Yeah, what? Well, that's all right. That's sort of like short for Costanino, or Cosatino, or something. Nothing wrong with that. What about you, Deb? Did you get your soul name? Excuse me, guys. I've got hay fever, and I'm going to be. Blowing my snores a few times. So, Deb, did you get your soul name? I know that um, Kimber did. Kimber, you wrote yours up last week. Cos. C O S. And you know, when you. Um, not yet. It's because you haven't had time. Oh, there you go. Short for Cosmos. That's that's pretty good. That was a good that was a good translation. Already. Not short for anything. <laughs> well Kimber just shortened it. No, Kimber just strengthened it. Short for cosmos. You could be you could be the cosmos. Well you are the cosmos, Pete. Um so thank you for giving up your Wednesday nights, Mr. Shade. Okay, so we'll just um, wait to see what happens now because we do have um, a bit of time and as I said, there are a few people that can't make it tonight. I did, I did not do that because I fell asleep at that point. <laughs> you fell asleep at that point. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. <laughs> at least you are, at least you were relaxed enough to fall asleep. So what it was, Elle, was a, a meditation on finding your, it's from the, the Sacred Language of Light cards that we did at the end. Hey, Lynette. Welcome. Sending you mwah, lots of love. Hope you're feeling better. Um, <clears throat> so last week we did a, a, did a meditation um, from the, the Secret Language of Light cards. 
and it was um, your soul name. So I'm just going to do that at the end of each, um, each lesson here. Uh, can I close the blind behind me? Sure. Is it a bit bright? Is that better? Oh, that's much better. Thanks, Pete. Hi, Leanne. Yep. Oh, gosh, it's much better. Absolutely. So I'm down south, down at Helensburg, staying with my beautiful family, my, um, my mum and dad's side of the family down here, down the south coast. Oh, that's better. Okay. Okay, so it's 7.30. So let's kick off. Um, <clears throat> last week I actually did most of my um, the the night's discussion was on return to soul and me explaining how um, my experience from being with the masters and then the masters staying with me or not staying with me, returning to me about a year later to actually bring these teachings um, to me which was absolutely uh, life-changing and so um, then I continued on teaching this uh, many years ago in the early 2000s um, and I was doing yes good I think we'll only go for an hour tonight not an hour and a half because um, I'm I'm not on I'm not on um, I'm not on the internet server so um, yeah, we'll probably only do an hour. And uh, anyway, so yeah, last week was about the masters coming to me and the teachings that um, that was delivered to me about a year after that. And uh, and this is actually where the way of love comes from. It was um, called the Soul Code, and uh, gee, back in the early two thousands, I had quite a big number of people that would study this with me. It was a beautiful um, community. And as time went on and changed and the internet came on um, and I went to university. That's right. I went to uni. When I went to uni then, um, of course, all my attention had to stay pretty well focused on uni. So I had to kind of let go of something. And then at that time, that was letting go of um, <clears throat> the soul code as it was the, so it was like the code of the soul, the soul code. So um, that's what this is, and I've just changed the name to um, the way of love because I believe that it's probably more appropriate. Hey, Alicia, welcome. Good to see you. And Leanne, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, and and um, I'm sure you were here last week when I discussed that this is an opportunity for us to be able to at least come together in a virtual um, lounge room. So the only difference that we don't have here is that we don't have coffee, tea and Tim Tam, so you've got to supply your own. Um, but at least this is something we can all look forward to, um, an online um, study where we can all connect and start. Um, and I'm only new to this, so as we go along, I will be wanting to... Um, go into Skype or something so we'll probably go from here into Skype and start a, a Skype group Skype group <clears throat> uh, so um, hi Georgie see you on the weekend too down at uh, I'll be down at or down across at Bulleye I'll be in there doing some soul readings at Bulleye and catching up with Georgie for some dinner uh, so yeah um, Let's just take a moment. Ah, Lydia, <laughs> you thought you weren't going to be here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, anyway, so I didn't mean it that way. I'm glad you're here, Lydia. Welcome. Uh, okay, so let's um, begin and we'll kind of unfold this as we go along. Uh, so... Uh, 
Um, I did begin last week with um, a few uh, a few discussions. Um, that was uh, we did as a meditation. Um, as a soul, I am here to heal every obstacle to the presence of love. Um, so this is all going to be, you know, all about um, why are we here, the embodiment of the soul, the soul's journey, the soul's purpose, and those existential questions that we have, you know, like why am I here, and it, this just is going to continue to go and unfold and unfold, because it's quite a big, um, it's quite a big dialogue. So let's just take a moment and close your eyes um, with me, if you don't mind. Hi Caroline, uh, thank you. You're not late, we're only just starting. So um, yeah, just, just close your eyes. Let's kind of all just drop in for a moment and just connect and um, just allow yourself to be fully present with where you are and that you've set aside this time um, to connect up with this, this virtual community where we can meet um, and connect as beautiful friends, um, soul soulmates, really soul friends, and uh, yeah, as this a a really beautiful uh, opportunity to be grateful for that. Even though we we can't be together physically now, that we have this opportunity to join together. So just visualize. Maybe you know, just visualize, pretend, and and just think that we are actually you know all. When you when we could actually look at the the <clears throat> the where we all are in Australia, we've got um, all the way out at Broome is um, Kimbra, and then we come back into Wagga and and Cootamundra and down to uh, down to Canberra, and just know just got a sense of joining together and how amazing the mystery is that that we've got this opportunity now because um, once upon a time yes it was that we had a great community of people that were attending um, this gathering but at the same time um, those that were far far distance away weren't able to make it so um, it's really lovely that we've kind of got this connection far and wide and um, and I also know that there's um, possibly people over in Perth that are connecting. Um, as we go along, you know, I'm hoping that we can connect all around the globe. That would be lovely. And and just imagine what it would be like to see each and every one of us as little little portals of light on a matrix, just, you know, a web, a web of little um, vortexes of light that gather all around the planet. And um, that'll be, you know, that's the ultimate goal here is to to build that web of light uh, to surround the entire planet. And um, just through this, just through this practice alone, this gathering alone, that we're doing our bit for the planet, and everyone else is doing their bit as well. Um, yeah, and we just happen to be connected and, and connected um, by the pathway here and our connection together. Hey, Nat welcome um, so yeah it's a, an opportunity to um, really be grateful and center ourselves and and connect up connect up those um, threads threads of light you know imagining that there's a thread of light that connects us up to broom and there's a thread of light light that connects us from broom down to down to Wagga and across to Across to Newcastle and back down to, to Canberra, and, <clears throat> and there's a beautiful thread of light. And at each town, at each portal where we are, there's a, a bright light sh shining, and that light that's shining is is the own our own light, our own light, our own soul that's emanating um, and sending out a connection <clears throat> where we can all meet here together. And uh, we've got the Central Coast as well. So, yeah, just to actually put down, and Coffs Harbour, thank you, Michelle. Coffs Harbour and Wainoni, welcome. Yeah, so just, just let everyone know where you are here. Just write down, Michelle's from Coffs Harbour. Um, Nat is in um, Cootamundra. And where are you, Pete? Peter's at, I should know, Harrington. 
pretty cool. Hey Kylie, welcome. Kylie's just um, completed a, we did a Reiki one. She's our, our master, uh, Reiki, Tibetan Reiki master. So we just did a beautiful Reiki master, uh, Reiki one class was part of her training this weekend, just gone. Um, Kudamundra, Coffs Harbour. Where are you, Wainoni? Newcastle. Harrington. Burrower, yes, Burrower. Lake Haven. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful. All these little Lake Macquarie, all these little beacons of light, all gathering. So it's it's nice to kind of see that, that it, that's what it is that we're doing here, is that we're, we are connecting. Wollongong, Caroline, thank you. That we're all connecting here and, and it's like <clears throat> spreading out these these threads and this web of light connecting with each other and uh, yeah that's what this is about continuing to build and to keep on connecting that light and spreading it around around the planet okay so <clears throat> we'll begin with um, as I said uh, when the masters came back came to me uh, the first time they took me up and out of my body and into the cosmos back down into the center of the earth um, the stories in Return to Soul and I read it last week and then what happened is then the messages continued from there and these are the messages as we continue along so at any time please feel free to ask any questions and um, and just know that when we, we go from here I'll, and if I can get a zoom a zoom room will be able to kind of go in and do some do some connecting <clears throat> there a lot easier so here is where it began that the master said that they came to be where you believe yourself to be and I kind of question like well like every one of us believe ourselves to be on this beautiful spiritual path and this was an opportunity for the for the masters to actually to join join in that place with me so if I, I use it for myself um, but in this example it was like it's like where is it right here right now where the masters can be with us even now that this is like 20 years down the track that this message is still like it's an ongoing it's never ending because the the connection with the masters is eternal and so it was like this is where the masters came into be and so to know that they're here with us even right now and that we what we're doing now is the same as what was going on um, 20 years ago when I when I first started doing um, the soul code <clears throat> so um, if we were not in fact choosing to turn our attention to the world of physicality through the vehicle called this body our communication would not require the device called channeling nor the devices of the technologies of this world such as this video that we're watching that record spoken words that are of themselves a reflection of what the words would point our mind to so if we were not if we were not actually looking within and, and having that, that questioning ourselves, like, who am I? Why am I here? So going through our own our questioning of what, of what spirit is and why are we here? What is our, our spirit pathway? Then this wouldn't, this wouldn't have occurred. So it's by the fact that we've all created this. This has been a part of what you and I have actually put forth into our own field um, to to create and to um, to bring back into our lives and this was actually organized for us prior to our embodiment onto on this planet so it's sort of like if it wasn't for us wanting and yearning so deeply to connect up then none of this would be happening so as part of evolution that's what's actually going on here and that these opportunities have come to us um, because once upon a time there was no no devices there was no technology and these were these all of this wisdom was handed down of course or, or only in the church or in in monasteries um, and now it's like 
as an evolved as evolved beings we are now also part of this ourselves <clears throat> and here's the thing if excuse me hang on i just got to i just got to fix my computer up here now it's telling me to no no don't do that don't do that goodness me sorry um, if we trusted that we if we trusted if we fully trusted that we we are the same as the masters right <clears throat> who of themselves knew that in order to be in communion with the divine they only need to look to the silent voice of the divine within if we remembered and trusted in that ourselves, we wouldn't need to be here. So if we truly believed the word of the masters, if we truly believed Krishna and, and Buddha and Jeshua, if we truly believed in their word that they spoke, that we are the one and the same as the masters, well then we wouldn't actually have to be even doing this work that we're doing now. So what this is about is about sort of like reminding us and allowing us to rekindle that knowing within ourselves so that we're no longer thinking that we're separate from not like the masters are separate from us this is about um about listening to listening to these words because we have attracted them into our lives um, so that we can actually embody our own divinity we can actually embody our own our own christ mind our own buddha buddha mind buddha consciousness krishna consciousness and instead of us being putting our attention and focusing outwards and adorning an entity or a deity or something outside of ourselves um, and we actually reclaim that this is who we are this is who i am this is who you are um, then we actually wouldn't be even having to be doing this what we're doing tonight so what this what the way of love is is it's like a process to help us unfold hi katie um, a process for us to unfold all of these aspects of ourself that have not been have not been true so the masters came to say that they didn't come to they didn't come to teach they didn't come to teach me they didn't come to teach us um, but they come to love us so there's a big difference between the 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 masters coming to teach and the masters coming to love us and um until we choose from the chose from the very depth of our own being to set aside every single illusion that we've ever given credence to and to remember that that truth is about who we all are every one of us so we are all so um as we go along here in these in these um in these teachings there will be um a part where they you know they say like take us down you know take take jesus down from the cross take the statues away and 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 stop focusing our attention on a deity outside of ourselves and to light a candle and to create an altar an altar and put a picture of ourselves on that altar and that's a really big big step for us because we have this yeah we, we've been brought up thinking that um all, all of our uh, our conditioning our religious conditioning and upbringing is basically you know we you know we have to speak to god and honor god and and all of those sorts of things and that's what this is about this is about teaching us we're well, not teaching us but the master's loving us through this process that we are to be the embodiment of those ones ourselves and i mean without that's without being egotistical and you know i am god and taking that the wrong way um, but yes yeah, starting to actually really define the difference between um, <clears throat> between worshipping something outside of ourselves worship worshiping worshiping a false god and turning our attention within to the own self god within so that's what this process is doing as we un, un, as we unfold so <clears throat> when that occurs for us there is a transcendence of all that know of all that knows limitation so what that means is when we actually step into understanding and knowing that who i am and who you are we are the a divine being we are all masters of our own journey 
and um, that we have chosen all of this as a soul in our own um, on our own pathway then we will know that we too are um, are going to see the limitations that actually um, stop us and and um, limit us from actually moving forward because we're still believing that we have to get approval off something that's higher than or more more than what we already know. So there is a transcendence of all that knows coming and going in birth and death and it's about really fully under, understanding ourselves as that multi-dimensional being that you've heard me discuss before. So I'm just, as I go along, I'm just going to talk and talk and talk and um, yep, because that's what this is about. It's about being able to just give you a whole heap of information. You can go back and listen to this yourself later and which I would recommend um, because as I, yeah, I might say something and when I say something you could, might, might make you think about, oh, you know, is that what I do is, is oh gosh, I, I am doing that, you know. Um, where is it? Are, are you actually putting up someone or something as a deity or as a, that represents a, um, a spiritual being um, up and above yourself as a, as a sovereign, free, unlimited um, master in your own right on this planet now? So there is only the there is only the mind of the divine, the mind of love, with each and every one of us. As a spark of the divine light, as a sunbeam to the sun, that rests eternally in perfect communion and communication at all times. So, as a spark of the divine, as a sunbeam to the sun. And that's what this, this message was about. Like, And it's also a really beautiful um, exercise that when you're outside and you're looking at the sun and then you're recognising you know, the, the beams of light that come from the sun, see that personified here as that's who you are, that you are a beam of light from the central sun. And that sun is representing source, consciousness, God, the divine, how you ever want to take that. And so there is, when we actually connect to that, that mind, that mind of the divine, that loving self, then, then that's where we start actually getting fully on our path and completely, completely free and liberated. So the great secret is that this is the state of our reality. This is the state of our reality. We think that we are someone else with different la some other labels. We believe that we're that you know I'm a female. My name's Robin. I'm a mother. I'm a and a, you know been a wife and I'm a daughter. And so we actually we're coming onto this planet as a pure, pure, beautiful, innocent, radiant little being of light. And then what happens is that conditioning, as you know, you guys already know a lot of this. Um, don't forget this is unfolding. You, you will actually know a lot of this already because of your spiritual path. But what this is doing is this is slowly, slowly chipping away and unfolding and building and building upon each other as we go along. So that, <clears throat> that is the natural state of our reality. And each and every moment, each and every single moment we abide in perfect communion with the whole of creation. Since all things are temporary modifications or, and personifications of the one fundamental energy that we call the awakened mind, the offspring of the divine, the offspring of source, the offspring of God. All right, don't get... Don't get freaked out if I use the word God. So um, that's every every one of us. Every absolutely everything is a meant is that um, that temporary uh, modification of the divine in all things, not just us, but everything, all things around us, everything that we're wearing, everything that's in our entire everything, everything that's in our entire field of awareness, everything that is a content of consciousness is the content of the light of the divine, absolutely everything. So when we choose to open to that place within the heart and within the mind in which we can communicate 
with the divine directly, well then um, we won't have to be even relying on communications such as this. Because we have the capability of channeling ourselves when when we believe and we know that who we are is this beautiful radiant light the sunbeam to the sun and that we are that beautiful radiant being of light from the source of the divine then and we actually quite and we actually quiet our minds down meditate and really deeply get in touch turn our attention within and deeply get in touch with that aspect of ourself then we too can actually start understanding and remembering this this part of ourselves all this is doing is just giving you information building upon and it's actually so much not like it's building upon itself it's going to start subtracting everything that you believed to be true about yourself so i believe that true awakening occurs through subtraction through letting go through actually realizing all the limitations that we put built upon ourselves that have been obstacles to our to our um to our awakening so this is how primordial the primordial meditation came into being there was many years of course where i was still doing um you know well you know, the masters came to me to teach me this. So, uh, well, not to teach me, to love me, <laughs> to share this love. And um, so I too was sort of like still requiring some source of information or wisdom outside of myself to be able to help me um, unravel um, my own my own um, concepts about life and death after my daughter died. Um, and then as I, by, by, by really deeply listening to these words over years and really, really taking full participation in the exercises and the insights and everything that came from the masters that came through this, then it literally like changed my entire existence. And to the point where um, I watched I moved through what we would call the um, multi-dimensions. Um, this was information that actually helps you move through the multi-dimensions, um, the layers and states and stages of consciousness. So what this does is like we're starting, this is starting at say third, fourth dimension and as we go along with this, as we, this continues and this is going to go on, this is, this is six weeks right guys, but we're going to go on for probably a year at least. And we're going to keep on going through these, you know, shattering all of the illusion and shattering through all these different um, layers of, of consciousness so that we can really get to a point where, um, in my case, primordial, primordial meditation, the primordial meditation process came through. So when primordial meditation came through, um, it was not only a practice but a way um, to communicate directly with the divine. So what um, primordial meditation is, it's a, it's a practice. Um, so here we have a whole lot of wisdom and sharing a lot of wisdom. And primordial meditation was given to me in about 2000 and, excuse me, about 2004. Primordial meditation was given to me, channeled to me directly from the cosmos or from source. And it is a practice that actually helps you get your own communic into that place of direct communication with the divine yourself. It's an amazing practice. I cannot recommend it highly enough. But that's the thing. It's it's still I'm still in the place um, of of teaching it and sharing it myself. Um, but there's a lot of you who have. There's a lot of you guys here who have done primordial meditation and and um, so you know once you really really commit to the practice and you dive 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 deep 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 into um, all of the multi-dimensional layers then there it just it just there's this amazing unfolding that occurs so that happened for me but it can happen for you too um, and that's what this information here is about 
So he's the master saying, you know, we've, we've come here to, to guide you, to love you through this process because you think that you're not already capable of doing this. Because I didn't think I was capable of doing it either. Um, <clears throat> but as I committed deeply to the practice and to the wisdom, um, of, then, then that's when my own connection with primordial meditation came through. So the first thing we need to consider is the simple fact that um, our experience here on this earth is always the effect of where we place, we choose to place our focus of attention of consciousness. So I'll say that again. The first thing that we must consider is the simple fact that our experience is always the effect of where we choose to focus the attention of our consciousness. So, this takes me back to primordial meditation, right? If our um, attention, if our focus of attention is always, always, every day on the divine, then that means that the our outcome and our experience every day is actually going to um, bring back the effect. So this is like the ripple effect. What we put out into our quantum field, the universe is going to is going to mirror back to us and send back to us. So in this situation, with all of the exercises and guidance that um, that is shared here through the way of love and through primordial meditation, it's like you can just totally drop through all the layers um, of the, the third, fourth and fifth dimension um, and then you do that every day and life just literally, life just is just changing dramatically um, because when your attention is on the divine and all the layers of the divine, then of course then what's going to happen? Then that, then the, the gifts and the essence um, of the divine is what's, going to, that's, is what's going to come back to us. And that's what we all want, right? That's what we all want. Sorry about that. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was hitting the wrong buttons. Okay. Um, so normally we choose every day to focus our attention of our consciousness on in the morning when we wake up. So the morning we wake up, the alarm goes off. We wake up in the and we wake up in the body. Then the body goes to the bathroom, and then it needs a coffee to make it alert. And so then then we feed it with breakfast, and then we get in the shower, get dressed. We check our Facebook, our Instagram, and our emails, and maybe we get stuck on Facebook post about someone and then we can get caught up in all of that and um, or you know or there's something that, that pulls us in about gossip or so the posts get us caught up in something about someone somewhere around the world and then we get um, into our car our buses our trains and we start rushing around um, with other people to get to work and before we know it we forget the most important thing in this experience of the world and that is that um, who we are we are not we are actually not this body with all of these all of these um, things happening to us the third dimensional things that who we are is a soul that we are unlimited soul we're unlimited forever and we're actually embracing all the ways of of um, dimension of creation so this is actually who we really are, but we get sidetracked by all of the identification. So if we wake in the morning, in other words, so as the exercises that we get from here is if we wake every morning and our attention every morning goes on before I open, when I open my eyes, my alarm clock goes off. But before I jump out of bed, of course, unless you do have to go to the bathroom in a hurry, but before I jump out of bed, I'm going to turn my attention within and I'm going to put my awareness on my breath. I'm going to breathe the breath, the breath. Remembering we just discussed this last week in a meditation. The breath is the carriage of the soul. And so when I put my attention on the breath in the morning, I breathe in the light of the soul into being. And I feel and I know that who I, who I truly am is this radiant, divine, beautiful being of light. 
and when we actually put our focus on that every morning and that's the first place we put our attention then that's where as I said we're putting that into our quantum field we're sending out that I am I am an infinite beautiful divine being I am I'm a being of love and light and this isn't you know your new age cliche love and light stuff this is like the soul is actually made of particles of light of energy of spirit and so really really turn our intention and, and knowing that um, the breath is the carriage it's like the breath breathes as we breathe the the breath into this body as the carriage of the soul then and we really allow that that breath to deepen fully and in, deep into touching every part of us lighting up every cell of our being then we can't you all can't help it but have an awesome day and I know that a lot of you who who have your own practice like this, you know how amazing this is. Um, so <clears throat> who you really are is that which embraces all things in all ways, at all times. And in truth, you do not know separation. You do not know birth. You do not know death. And you do not know gain. And you don't know loss. They're all the things that we've limited ourselves through believing that as, as a limited body I experience all these things um, and because we're so identified, as I said, identified and we define ourselves by our body um, but to truly know ourselves as a soul, as an infinite being, there is nothing that holds us back and so that's what we're doing here. We're actually going, we're going from this limited self and we're just going to continue to, to draw open and, and really pull our consciousness and our awareness out so we know that who we truly are is this beautiful infinite being boundless being of of, um, of spirit so <clears throat> just recognize for a minute how you as an infinite being have deliberately chosen to participate in in this in a form in this form of experience through this sensory apparatus of the body through which to filter the energies of this physical domain. So just recognize that, you know, the, the, this is the, this, so this body is the vehicle, and as I said, it is, and the breath is, is the carriage of the soul, and so it's not that we're, it's not that we're denying the body, it's just that we're actually, um, yeah, even looking um, from a much better point of view also that this vehicle, the carriage of the soul, is also for us to, to, to nurture and to, to love. And even the fact that we've got this opportunity for me to be speaking and for you to be speaking to others and that the vibration from our vocal cords create words and carry certain meanings for each and every one of us and each and every one of us color that meaning according to the perceptions that we have chosen to place the value upon it so our perceptions are are our conditioning and what we believe to be true so um gosh i remember you know it took me a long time I, and and so say for example some of you may have say for example you read Conversations with God um, and you know that you read it you could have read it one year when something was going on and it helped help you shift through a whole lot of stuff at the time and then you put it down and then a year later you went and picked it back up again and it's like oh my god it's like you've read it it's like all new that you've read it read and you've only read it for the first time and that's what happens is we actually um, we color the meaning of um, of what we what we hear and how we perceive things to be. So even now, as we go through this thing, you will have moments, aha moments, and then if you listen to this again, because all of this will be going up on YouTube. If you listen to this again, um, you know down the track, and your perceptions have changed then this will, you know, if there's some parts of this that you don't understand right now, um, then later on down the track you actually, you know, will, you'll understand it 
because of the way that you've um, you've changed your own perceptions of things. So in reality, every one of us is all equal, and we were all born the same. Um, the masters, you know, just was like that was the thing. Remember that this is the truth. The truth is that we are all born equal. Every single newborn baby on this planet is a newborn, radiant, infinite, beautiful, innocent soul. Now, every single one of us. Now, when we know that and we remember that, then, of course, that changes our whole perception about what we believe about other people, right? So in other cultures and in other countries and there are people who who are less kinder than others but we have to remember that even those that are that are that are born um, uh, that are acting out um, in a place of harm and unkindness terrorism murderers um, people that are abusive like they're all they were all born exactly the same as us and so Yet their perception of um, their perception of the way that they've been they've been brought up is what has created their uh, their outcome. So that's why um, you know it's about a lot of this is about being able to definitely learn forgiveness. Of course, the biggest teachings with. Um, a course in miracles is all about forgiveness and that's because how that's how important it is that we actually really do understand this there's not one person and it's not one person who you like or don't like that aren't born exactly the same and we're all the same so um, each and every one of us have cho chosen from the infinite freedom to attract to ourselves certain vibrational frequencies Certain, certain forms and qualities of experience. We've chosen it all. Absolutely everything. We've chosen it all. And I mean, this is the things that I had to had to um, myself come to terms with. Like when my daughter died, I, you know, prior to prior to going through that um, crisis, to me, um, um, to me. I don't know, I was just walking around ignorant, really. Um, when when I had to literally swallow that one, that I chose this journey, and I chose to, um, to have a child that died and to put me on this path, when I first heard it, um, and a lot of people find it difficult to hear it first, but when you're ready to hear it and to hear it, Hear it um, properly and clearly. Clearly, when you when you on your soul's path, when you're on the pathway of awakening, um, of course it comes across totally different. So of course I've gone wow. Like so, I chose the experience of my daughter dying, and that meant that I chose to be with her father in, in the town that she that when I had Taylor and. The town, the hospital she was in, and what happened, like, and like, what if? There's no, no, even what if? Like, that's what the grieving and bereavement process is like. What if? What if I didn't go to that hospital? What if I went to another hospital? Maybe she wouldn't have died. Um, and this is all what we do. Like, this is what we go through. All these processes of um, denial and bargaining, and at the end of at the end of it when we if we come out of grief in a healthy way we actually come out in a place of being able to let go and and just trust more in this process and i know that that happens to a really lot of people who um go through a crisis go through trauma and you know whatever you guys are here for and everyone who who listens to this has um, gone through something that you have actually attracted to yourself to actually be here listening to this. It's already a soul contract. It's already a contract. Um, so, uh, so the freedom is what we abide in always. From the 
from before the foundation of the world and long after the world ceases to be. So this is saying that this has been an eternal journey. It's been infinite. It's been a, as it's been a 16 billion, 40, sorry, 14 billion year journey. Um, this this experience, where we are now, is on this um, this evolutionary process, a trajectory towards grander greater, more um, more expressions of ourself. So we actually are a 14 billion year process, like it or not. And so this has been happening before the foundations of the world and long after the world ceases to be. So to get a sense of that freedom and where... Um, here's a question like, where were you before you were born? So where were you before you were born, if you think about that. <clears throat> a lot of people, when I ask that question, like, where were you before you were born? They would often say, oh, nowhere. It's like, yeah, I know, right? So... What's the mystery? Where that's that that's actually what this sentence is like. Where were we before we were born? What from what existence? It's like it's a mystery and it's amazing mystery. Some people will say, Well, I was in my mother's womb and prior to that I was the sperm and the egg and I will just keep on going, and where were you before that? And where were you before that? And where were you before that? Where were you before the dinosaurs? Where were you before the planet? Where were you before the cosmos? And when we actually keep on going back, we're still going to go back to that place, that ground of being. And like it or not, we're still going to go back either way. Either we, the minute we actually go where were I before I was born, there's just that vast empty space of mystery. Or we can keep on going back 14 billion years and still hit the same vast space of mystery back to 14 billion years before anything came into existence back to the ground of being before the big bang concept so before even light um, came into being okay so this is really important that we we start kind of thinking that's what's great about that's what's great about these teachings is that it just gives us more some really nice things to <laughs> to chew over i guess Okay, um, before the foundations of the world, to get a sense of that freedom. And what will it be like after the world as we know it ends? We probably don't want to think about that, right? What will it be like after the world as we know it ends? When there's no planet. It's like we can't, our brain, our minds just can't go there. Um, a lot of exercises that I do in um, True Awakening and also the Heart of Grace that's in a few weeks at Bali, it's like really getting into, wow, like what does that really, really, really mean for me? That um, to be able to totally dissolve and transcend all the dimensions, all the illusion and really fully immerse ourselves deeply into knowing ourselves as a infinite, timeless, formless, beautiful, conscious presence. <laughs> so that's actually what um, that's what we do in Bali. It's hard to do it. It's not hard. It's it's, it's difficult to do it as much this way, because as I said, this is just a sharing. But um, if any of you want to really be able to get knuckled down and really really allow yourself to be dropped into that place so that you um, that wisdom and that truth doesn't keep you up thinking about it and in in the in the in the ascending stuff and all the the dimensional stuff and get, really get this to drop in really descend totally and drop it into into being and really sense a feeling to get a feeling of that and to um, notice the edges where we we might have fear and we want to run from it and um, to get an opportunity where we can really allow ourselves to dive deeper and to fall into the or fall into the heart of grace that's why it's called the heart of grace um, to really fall into that place and to know ourselves as that infinite timeless formless being 
So, um, yeah, so we've got, to, we've got to be willing to, as I said, like, awakening occurs through subtraction. So we've got to be willing to lose everything. Your body, your home, your family, your car. Um, all of the labels that we identify ourselves to be in the physical form. Now, that may also sound awkward or conflicting, but please know that that literally is the way that uh, a true awakening will occur for us. To be willing to lose everything. So by way of awakening occurs through the way of subtraction. To be willing to lose everything. To lose the body, to lose the thoughts, to lose your name, your family, your car, your home, and all of the labels and everything that we identify ourselves to be. And when all of that falls away, it's about like consciousness and true conscious and true awakening is like, then what's left? What is that that's left when all of these things, um, when we're willing to let all of these things go? Um, again, as a concept, something to think about now. Um, but if you want to really experience it deeply, then come along to one of the week-long retreats. And I do push, oh no, push, I don't say push, but I do encourage retreats because, honest to God, it takes, it takes a couple of days for us to really unravel the nervous system of this being that we think we are. And, um, and so it usually takes about three days, then all of a sudden the penny drops and it's like everyone, everyone gets it. Uh, and it's real exciting. It's real exciting when everyone just gets it. So it's about letting go of control, letting go of everything, letting go of control. So when you hear that, when you hear that, like what is it that that brings up? What are you sensing? If I let go of everything, what is what what's left when you let go of all of these labels and identifications? Can you just write it in in the the box here? I think I can find it here. So what? What do you, what comes up? Because I know a lot of people, like there be a sense of, come on. Um, uh, for some people there can be a sense of freedom and spaciousness and lightness of being. But for other people it can bring up fear. But who will I be if I'm none of those things? Like, if I'm not the labels and if I'm not um, attached to this solid form, and so where was I before I was born? You know, that's a, that's a, that's a really great um, question of inquiry. Peace, good Deb, freedom, yeah, Alicia, a sense of freedom, a sense of peace. Sometimes, as I said, you know, it can bring up, well, if there's nothing, if there's nothing, the, what happens is when there's nothing, the, the ego can go, oh, you've got to be something. I simply am. That's right. What's left? What's left when there's nothing there? What's here? I am. I am here. It's, so who was here? Who was here, um, yeah, when you were, when you were 20? Who was here when you were five? You know that same I am presence is always here. It's always here, and 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 that same I am presence is here before we take on this physical form. I am. I am here. Very good. So um, you know, just like practice that a little bit if you can. It's like when you let go of all of your labels and just put everything aside, or. Or even like what what um, one of the things that I love about um, when uh, Ramana Maharishi visited me, another master, um, uh, Ramana Maharishi actually um, questioned why I think why his parents died, and so he then um, put himself took himself away and put himself through an experience where he pretended that 
he died and because he, he'd wondered like what is it what is it when the body dies what's it, what's it going to be like and he imagined that. what what's it going to be like when um, he imagined himself seeing himself dying seeing his family all around him on the deathbed watching his breath take his last breath then seeing the body put into a coffin um, and of course he was um, uh, Indian so probably saw himself being being burnt and floating down the, Gan the Ganges River um, but he actually put himself that through that process so that he could get a really sense of what is it that dies um, when the body dies what is it what is it that really dies and what if it what what is it that stays and so through his own meditation he was to he was able to really get in touch with it's the body dies but who I am is always here. So the awareness, the silent, the silent awareness is always here. And that's a really great, um, a really great meditation, you know. And it can be a bit scary, you know. So give yourself a, an opportunity to um, to go with that. Imagine what it's like to see yourself dying and seeing yourself at your own funeral, and and then um, and hi, Lise. Um, and how see yourself looking down upon your own funeral and and then your body being buried or being buried and and then and then the body no longer being here the vehicle the body and and then just look turn your attention to what's aware turn your attention to what's still here what's still available what's still radiant and alive when the body itself has died um, and so I really love that um, that what uh, Ramana did because um, it really laid out an amazing opportunity for me to look at the concept of when Taylor died. I did like I went and sat with mediums and it was like I oh, you know it was someone I wanted someone to come and bring me a message to say that my baby was with them you know in heaven, all of those sorts of stories, and um, it wasn't until down the track and when I heard that story it was like right yeah so she's always been with me um, and that's why it was really difficult for me and I struggled with not having evidence I struggled with not having evidence of life after death of Taylor dying but she was just this pure pure infinite soul and um, of course that's in Return to Soul in the book um, but yeah, like that, that really made me realize, oh my God, like the awareness, the silent conscious awareness, her spirit, her soul, the essence of her, her infinite, pure, empty, infinite being was always here. So when I started connecting to that, it's like, wow, you know, of course, and it goes on, continues from there. So, um... Letting go of control is the same as meeting your death. To discover that which is bigger than anyone's power to control and it has no and what has no no need of control. So this is about being able to um, let go of um, letting go of of the body, letting go of the body and the labels and all those things is is it is about meeting your own death and so in as i said like in in bali a lot of the exercises we do is like we're meeting you're meeting your death you're meeting um all of the parts of yourself that you've labeled and and built a perception up based on um your conditioning and letting go of that and then just being able to like fully immerse yourself in the true nature of being so it's an opportunity to surrender to that, to breathe into it, to open to it, to allow it and to embrace it deeper and deeper, to not run away from it, to don't push it away, um, and to just simply breathe and open to what's here, no matter what it, what it, no matter what it is. So, if you're actually having that, um, doing a visual of seeing yourself at, on your own deathbed, <laughs> you're dying, um, like just watch where. 
watch where the ego is coming in and there's fear um, the the body's fearing the, the death because that means that the ego is going to the ego is not going to be here anymore and it, it no longer has a purpose on this life if it, if it hasn't got a body with all of the labels what's the ego going to do it's got nowhere to go um, so um, really um, allow yourself to notice what comes up when you think of these things notice what comes up and and meet meet the fear meet every um, aspect of it that's um, that's fearful or scared um, that contracts or tries to recoil or run away from the experience um, and just allow yourself to breathe into it open to it allow it and really just watch the process go through because it's really important that we all do this so that um, we are no longer fearing our physical death and when we can actually be in the place where we no longer fear our physical death which is inevitable for all of us then we can actually stop living in fear of that and we can be more present in the moment to just enjoy and love um, this beautiful life and the gifts and we can be like full of gratitude for every moment because we're not worried about the things we should do or we shouldn't do or we can or can't have in order to survive and then we are actually surrendering and going with the the full flow of of uh, the true meaning of of our reason for being here as um as beautiful souls on this place on this on this planet to wake up this is what we're here for we are here to wake up to this stuff and this this is this is literally nearly all we're here to here to, here to do to wake up to this and to then start really living and and loving um you know every single aspect tasting tasting everything you know i'm finding now that that's just ridiculous it's not ridiculous but the most ridiculous simple things is like oh i can just like this love is just oozing out of everything i'm so grateful i'm so in love with everything this bloody computer is like as i look in front of me it's like a computer it's like i love that i just i love i love the fact that I know that this computer is made out of the same light in a different form, um, but it's made of the same. Whoop! There's not. It's not the same light. It's made of the same light and the same um, molecules and, and, and atoms and cells and everything that I am and that you are. So you just need to start falling in love with everything. When you fall in love and with with understanding that we are all this, we are all the same here in this multitude of, of um, manifestations then we can fall in love with like everything anything there's nothing there's no limitation anymore it's just ongoing so um, so each and every moment um, you cannot be a victim of what you see and nothing is outside of you what you experience you have directly and deliberately called to yourself as this for, to get here to be doing this and then we'll go like I don't like what I've called to myself like I don't like that I called to myself my daughter dying it's like then I'm, then I'm in judgment then I'm in judgment for for not liking what I called to myself it's just you know it's just um in this place of surrender and, and trusting that each and every moment everything is perfect this is perfection this is perfection and everything that occurs no matter what it is from the moment you open your eyes brushing your teeth going to the bathroom putting on the kettle getting to work getting stuck in the traffic every aspect of it is by divine perfect intervention and by um, by our soul that has called this to ourselves as our journey of awakening and as I said last week at the end of last week's video I just went I would not take anything back I could can't take anything back um, of Taylor dying and um, and I can even say you know, and I'm even glad I went through it I mean which is, sounds really weird right I get it but oh my god if I didn't go through that I wouldn't be here now and I wouldn't be just like I wouldn't have met 
all of you guys and um, yeah, just excuse me, I just got my computer on here again. Okay, so um, we're gonna finish up here. It's half past eight, and um, tonight's card is now. I don't know if we can see this. It's called Awakening. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's this beautiful. There's this beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I grew. That, of course, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, so there's this beautiful being of light. You see the light shining out of the center of this being. And this card's the Awakening card. And remember last week it was about the soul name. I just want to read this. So every every week I'm just going to give you one of these beautiful little soul cards as well. So you are or about to experience an aha moment. This will come as a feeling of deep truth that seemed to have slipped your mind. You have often thought there must be another way to experience and live this life and you are about to discover it. I just love these because they align with the message that we have here. You are opening your heart and mind to the full authentic you. Time honoured ways that have worked in the past are no longer bringing the results you desire and may have, have become obstacles to your dreams. This may make sense to a lot of you. Beliefs becoming intermingled with everyday processes and who we think we are. No wonder it can seem hard to let them go. When you rise from the slumber of conformity, or our labels that we all conform to, you awaken into the same world, but through the eyes of soul love, you can see beyond fear to the creative possibilities that are everywhere. Relax and enjoy this time. It is your natural evolution. Remember, as I said, we are an evolutionary process. We are a process that's been going for 14 billion years. So the card again is the awakening card. So the meditation for this card is place your hand on your heart and this action energetically connects you with the vibrations of your soul. Slow your breathing and say to yourself, I am open to and trust my soul's guidance. I am open to and trust my soul's gui guidance. Allow yourself to feel calm and empowered and feel into your heart for the, for the key from the soul name meditation that we did last week. And take yourself to the doorway of your sacred soul space. Unlock the door. Notice your soul name on the door if you didn't see your soul name last week. Unlock the door. Notice the name on the door. Has it changed? Float into your sacred space as intense loving light envelops you and introduces itself as your soul. Allow your soul to move through your body and mind so you can accept and trust its messages without resistance. Let every part of you open to your soul and relax in its presence. Let every part of you continue to open and relax. You have just come home to the absolute fulfillment and beauty of you. A smile erupts within you and your whole being beams. Everything feels amazing and perfect. Come to this place as often as you can. Meditate daily and be with your soul and stay with this as long as you would like and when you're ready breathe deeply in and out and come back to your physical awareness so that's a lovely a lovely card awakening so you're going to have some aha moments that are going to be coming to you
So, that's it guys. It's 8.39 and um, I look forward to seeing you all again next week as we go, as I said, as we go deeper and unlock um, a lot more wisdom and uh, yeah, a lot more love and understanding and um, so yeah, any questions you can come in and ask me on Facebook Messenger and yeah let's just let's just keep unfolding this together and um, in so much gratitude to the masters for showing up and so much gratitude to the masters within our own self for creating this and showing up so that we can all come together ah Debbie my name is L beautiful ah nice awesome thanks guys I love you all and I'll uh, see you all next week.